Good morning, I'm Bill Dragoo with Adventure Rider Magazine. I'm out here with uh, James Pratt and Shannon Markle. We are in Logan, Utah on our way to the Redmond Rally, the BMW International um, Rally in Oregon. And we're going to do a presentation on changing the uh, rear tire on a BMW R1200 GS Adventure. A couple of things we'll do before we start. Uh, I'd like to kind of secure things for safety. I've got a, this is basically a packing strap that the, the motorcycles come in tied to my um, center stand and to my front wheel. And then I'm going to secure the front brake also. A couple of little things to keep this bike from coming off the center stand. And as we move ahead on this, you'll see why it might do that, other than the mind that they tend to have of their own sometimes. All right. the air out of the front tire and I, I keep a valve core extractor on the uh, front valve cap. I also keep a spare in my tool kit. Uh, the more convenient the better. It seems like you're always looking for one of these. Okay we're going to break the tire down now. The uh, 1200 GS comes with a built-in uh, braking tool and uh, works quite well in most cases. That is why you secure your center stand and your front brake. Just a little bit of forward movement and that thing will come off of there and you'll be chasing it down the hill or caught under it. Many people fight these and fight them and they're just really not that difficult to get off with, with a good technique. Okay. Okay, when we're changing the tire, it's a good idea to usually start and end at the valve stem. In particular, if you've got uh, wheel tire pressure sensors uh, built into the machine like this, it's kind of a large lump in there. You don't want to break that off, so you want to get the tire clear of that to be before you ever get started. So we'll get a tire tool started in that area, push the tire down into the channel, and then you can break it over pretty easy. To that point, all you have to do is pop it off. All right. Now, when I change my tires, I lubricate the bead with silicone every time, if you know, providing I have it in, uh, available. Uh, it makes this a lot easier. I've fought them a little bit to get them off, but uh, this tire is completely worn out, as you can see, and uh, you know, it popped right off. Okay, we're mounting a Continental TKC80 back in place of a worn out Continental TKC80. 2,500 miles of heavy throttle use on that tire. These are considered a directional tire, so you want to make sure your arrow lines up with logic and the direction of rotation. So here again, we're going to start, we're going to end at the valve core, the valve stem. So we'll push the tire in place, and then we'll go back to the bottom again. And it's on. Now we're going to reinflate this. I'm using a little slime 12 volt air pump, and there are times when these beads don't want to match and seal to the extent that they need to so that you can get the tire to reinflate. If that happens, you can take this band right here or some similar band and wrap it around the tire, scrunch it down with a stick or a tire, a tire tool, whatever you have to, to push the tire in, which will help to get the bead to seat. Also, you can have a buddy help compress it up here if you have one on hand, but you are gonna have to make it seal because these pumps don't provide any surge pressure that will help to get that tire started onto the bead. Let's see what kind of luck we get with this one.
Okay, so since that didn't work, then uh, we're going to have to use the strap and see if we can get lucky with this. We'll wrap the strap on there, put a little, little pressure on it. Try not to break our strap. It's pretty, pretty tough. As you can see, that's compressing that tire down. Turn a pump on. We ran the motor during the initial inflation so that we could pop the bead with the higher pump RPM. With the extra alternator voltage, we get a little bit more uh, pump volume. Also, we ran the air in initially with the valve core out. It's easier to flow the air inside. Now we'll put the valve core in and reinflate the tire to the proper pressure. And we'll start the motor. And let it run. 40 psi. Tire pressure, like your mileage, may vary. I run about 36 in the front and 38 to 40 in the rear for road conditions when carrying a load like this with the uh, Continental TKC80. You can get a little bit of flex if you get the tire pressure much below that. The low end of the tire pressure might be 6.8 PSI. Short story, I was out at Trona Pinnacles west of Death Valley last month and I went into an area that was uh, a deep sand wash, completely loaded bike went to the skid plate. I was completely buried. I unloaded the bike, did all the right things to get it out, pushed as hard as I could push. I couldn't influence the motorcycle. It wasn't going anywhere. So uh, I let, as a last resort, the air out of the tires, uh, both the front and the rear, down to that six to eight PSI range, stood beside the motorcycle, a slight nudge, let out the clutch, and it pulled itself out, almost completely under its own power. It makes that much difference. The idea of having an inflator with you, not just CO2, but an actual pump, uh, allows you to put the tires back up to reasonable pressures, all the way up if you want to road pressures, so that you can continue on safely. And we're done. So this is where you say, what about the front tire? How do you do that with it on the center stand? Well, it's a little bit more difficult to go that route. It's good to have a buddy available. But with a good set of tire tools, you can usually work this tire off the bead. We'll do the entire process in another video, but I do just want to mention that when you do that, be patient, keep a heavy boot on the bead, and protect your brake discs.